Hey everybody, welcome back to Trevor's Baseball Cards. Happy Saturday. Today, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the 1975 top set. The reason why we're doing that, today's my birthday. Yep, that's right, I was born October 17th, 1975. So for me, when I started collecting cards, that's right where I went to. I wanted to look at what was the set like when I was born. So I wanna go through that set, but just like every video, if you guys wait all the way till the end, we will be doing a giveaway. Nothing other than just walking through the set to see what it's all about, to see how many great names are in this, because if you have not seen a set from 1975 or have gone through it to look at every card, it is littered with the who's who of baseball and some pretty great rookies to go along with it. So here we go. Right off on the first page, the highlight cards were always some of my favorite because it had some of the best players in the game like Hank Aaron and Nolan Ryan. And as we go through this, this is a 660 card set. The first 132 cards were a considered a short print. They're printed in lower quantities. Nice Thurman Munson card. I love that card. And look at the colors on this. So it makes it really hard for um, getting these in high grade just because all the white chipping. I hand put this set together. So every card in here would be considered in my mind near mint. Nice Dusty Baker, Burt Blylevin. Dave Parker, a lot of great names in this set, Ron Santo. So I put every card together here myself, and at that time when I put it together, late 80s, early 90s, um, for completion, I really wasn't as concerned with centering. And one thing you'll find out with this set is there is a lot of centering issues. Nice all-star Brooks Robinson. And if you like older vintage card sets, this set will give you a good challenge but we'll also give you a lot of great names like Fergie Jenkins, Dave Winfield, Barry Bonds. I'm a SoCal guy and where I'm at, Barry Bonds has a park named after him that I grew up playing baseball. So when I was a kid in my neighborhood, that Barry Bonds card was a really cool card. And then of course his son came out and the rest is history with that one. But again, in 1975, it is a very colorful set. Nice Mike Schmidt card right there. Almost every Tug McGraw, almost every page that you'll turn, we will we'll find at least a star or a superstar or an all-star like Carlton Fisk. This set, when it came out, was 15 cents a pack. And it contained 18 cards and one stick of gum per pack. So back then, a rack pack would have 42 cards. And if you guys haven't seen a rack pack, I'm sure most of you have, it's kind of like three packs in one. So I've opened up rack packs of this. Willie Stargell, that's a nice Willie Stargell. I've opened up wax packs of this. So maybe we'll get a couple wax packs open on the show because I know they're really expensive, but that would be a fun break for the show. But again, like I mentioned, this is just a beautiful set. Really good set, just littered with the best in baseball. Nice Rick Monday, I'm a Dodger guy, so that's a pretty good one. Phil Necro. The big key stars in this set, rookie-wise, is gonna be George Brett and Robin Yount, Steve Garvey, go Dodgers. Great game last night, by the way. Scared me there for a little bit, but uh, looks like the Dodgers are ready to make some runs. How about that Bob Gibson? What a great card. So really looking forward to the game today. Trying to get my uh, video done early, not only for my birthday, but also for the game at 1.30 for me in Southern California here, Greg Nettles. And this is why I like binders, like I mentioned before. Really gives you an opportunity to go through the set. Joe Morgan, tough to see we just lost Joe Morgan. A lot of greats of the game we've lost this year. So, uh, but again, these old cards really give us that ability to go back and, uh, and remember. Topps in 1975 had a pretty cool series that I liked a lot. Really got me, like I talked about, Topps is good at doing the throwback or touch the throwing backs of cards. That's exactly what these are. They're going to throw back to each year that Topps was made. So that was 51, 52. Topps started in 1951, 53, 54. And then my favorite set is 1955. We've talked about that already. What's interesting about this 55 Topps card is that Roy Campanella. That's not part of the set. That was a mock-up that uh, someone must have done tops as a tribute card. So I always liked that card because I couldn't get the campy in the 1955 uh, Dodger set and I was a big Dodger collector. So I was always interested about that card. Pretty cool one there. Got 
Got the Hank Aaron we just talked about in my last video, reverse negative. A lot of Mickey Mantle. Everybody loves Mickey Mantle. So again, cool cards going through all the different eras. And that way, kids in 1975, they may not have you know, the ability to see the older cards if they didn't have a brother or anybody collecting in their neighborhood. So this is a good way for them to recognize what year's tops cards are so when they see them, they can know what to look for. So a pretty good little subset inside of this. Always loved that part of this set. Right on to Don Sutton. And there it is, Robin Yout. That's probably the second best card in this set, especially because a rookie card. But look at this page. Bob Gritch, Don Sutton, like we mentioned, Lou Pinella. That's a pretty good page. 1975 tops. And right behind it, there it is. There's the George Brett. So back-to-back -back pages, you get the two biggest cards in the set. Very pretty card. I loved the orange and per. Uh, sorry, the green and purple. It reminded me of now and later's. You don't know what a now and later is? Google it. It is an uh, 80s, 90s kind of hard candy toffee, but they always had these same kind of colors. So it re always gave me that memory. So like I mentioned, this is for me. This is all about getting those memories back. Jim Cott, just chuck full of Hall of Famers. Oh, Bill Buckner with the Dodgers. I do love the look of this. So right now, um, what I'm going to be looking for is, I mentioned Topps Heritage. I like collecting Heritage. Nice Johnny Bench. What I'm going to be looking forward to is when Heritage does the 1975 Topps. So for 2021, it'll be 72. 2022 will be 73. 2024 will be 74. So 2025 will be 1975 Topps Heritage. So, uh... Hopefully our channel has uh, been grown and we still get the ability to do all this for you guys at that time. How about the Carl Yaskrimski? That's a pretty card. Love it. And I love the background of these. I love how it's more simple. A lot of this stuff is like spring training. They'll do photos. So really cool background and a window into the era of 70s baseball. And there's my guy Ken Griffey's junior's dad. <laughs> That's senior. But my goal in 1975, when we get uh, in, in 2025, when we get those heritage boxes, is to go big, buy a couple cases, crack them open, and see what we can get. I think that would be a, a fun goal for us in 2025. The set is pretty big, so we're going to try to move a little bit quicker. But as we do that, we run right into a Reggie Jackson, great Reggie Jackson card. So I will encourage people to. Uh, Leader cards are always cool to maybe go on eBay. If you'd like to start a 1975 tops, I recommend starting buying a larger group of cards or a near set. That way we're just chasing a few or upgrading a few. And I bet if you find a near set rather than complete, you're able to get a better deal on it. Obviously missing some cards, but also gives you more opportunity to collect nice Pete Rose and grow this. So that's how I did it. I would go to card shows and I would cherry pick you know, a, a lot of 175 tops cards that all looked X. Even if I might've had some of them, I would just ask the best deal on the whole group. So always try to bundle when you're trying to build these bigger sets, especially nice Jim Palmer, especially when you're trying to, when you're trying to get these bigger sets made that no one wants to buy commons. Like it's so tough building sets, right? We just want star cards, hard building commons. So that's the way I've always done it is try to work on bundle deals from your local card shops or your dealers. And if you can't do that, always go on eBay and search 1975 tops lot and see what you come up with. I will always go on there as well and do uh, lowest price and ending soonest and buy it now. And sometimes great Tom Seaver card. Sometimes what you'll find, Steve Yeager on the same page, nice page. But again, sometimes what you'll find is you'll find really low priced cards that could get you started and get you pretty far along towards the set. But again, 1975, how about that one? I always love this card, look who that is. That's Bruce Boshi, played for the Angels. And what was a little story about that, I'm gonna break out my Red Wave minor league card. So in 1987-88, the minor league team for us in my neighborhood, besides the uh, San Bernardino Spirit, was the Riverside Red Wave. And just recently, when I pulled up my whole autograph set, that's right, I got every card autographed in person, uh, I found a surprise card that I didn't know that Bruce Bochy was the manager of the Riverside Red Wave. 
So a nice little surprise there in a minor league card, but that's for another video. We'll break out our Riverside Red Wave and minor league cards, give that a video as well. But we're still kind of trying to get close. We got about a quarter way through this 75 top set. Thank you guys for joining me on this video. And again, like we mentioned at the end of it, there will be a giveaway, a great Willie McCovey. But again, a 1975 top set, 660 card total. And these are tough pages is why I paused for me. In 1974, the Dodgers were going against the Oakland Athletics in the World Series. So, and we lost that one. So these cards were always really hard for me to uh, see and get, but uh, I loved the photos. I loved the history of this. I love that they're all in cards. So again, just a great set that Topps put out. No numbered cards, no inserts, no autographs to chase. Just a ton of dudes on baseball cards. There's a lot of different guys in this set. And in 1975, even in 80s, so our card sets in 87 were 792 cards. So those sets were massive and just kept us chasing, but they were very big. But back here, back then in 660 cards, it was still a big set. That's why they put them out in series. So as we go through these, some of these sets that we'll be going through of the different years, the high series or the low series, give or take, low series being numbers one through 80, one through 100, one through 200, are usually the tougher ones in first distribution or the last series of the set. But we'll talk about more of that as we go through this great Lou Brock card. And as you guys have heard all the names, I'm sure I've missed a few as I flip the pages. It's just chuck full of some of the greats, Billy Williams, Early Goose Gossage card. I believe that's his second year card. Doesn't have that famous mustache. All the baby faces too, right? I mean, just wonderful, wonderful cards. Tommy Davis is a Dodger fan. Tommy was absolutely everything. I loved Tommy Davis. I got an opportunity to meet him in person working for the company I did before. And just exactly the happy-go-lucky guy that he presented himself on the field was the guy he was in real life. Big red, red, big red machine for Tony Perez up there. Another great page. Almost done with this. Got about 10 more pages that we're going to go through here. Frank Robinson. Just chuck loaded full of Hall of Famers. Tim McCarver, announcer. 1975 was right in that sweet spot where you get the players of old and the players of new. Speaking of that, Phil Necro right next to Hall of Famer. Rod Carew. That one's for my wife. She loves Adam Sandler more specifically. She loves that Hanukkah song. Very rarely do you turn a page and you don't find a star. And speaking of stars, my favorite cards in 1975 were the rookie cards. Some of the greats inside here and some of the big cards, it's going to be Hall of Famer Jim Rice's rookie card right there. And then you also get Hall of Famer Gary Carter's rookie card as well but again very cool opportunity to get more than one guy on a rookie and sometimes like we mentioned in 78 you get a couple hall of fame rookies on one card almost done with the whole entire set Harmon killebrew in the end how about that we just showed you his 55 rookie that's a 1975 tops card so from 55 to 75 Harmon Killebrew had a long and amazing career. Last couple pages, and I've always loved this set because guess who you get to end on? That's right, Hammerin' Hank Aaron is your card number 660. So guys, thank you again for joining me today. Thank you for joining me on my birthday. Thank you for taking the time and going through this whole entire set with me. I know it's not the most prettiest or shiniest like the new cards, but I think it's very historic and I think Topps did a wonderful job with it. So today's giveaway, we're gonna give away a Hall of Famer, a rookie card from 1975, and that's gonna be a Jim Rice rookie card. It's a very clean card. This card looks near mint to mint to me. Very pretty. And again, guys, all you have to do is subscribe, like the video, and comment below. And in 30 days, we're gonna randomize all the comments and free of charge, we're going to ship this card to everyone that, oh, who won, sorry, that who won. 
Uh, I'm trying to think in my mind too about how I'm going to do this because every day I don't want to be having to do randomized videos. So I might do um, one a week and then do all seven from that week in one video. So still trying to figure it out, but we'll get there. We're getting close to our 30 days doing one video every day and a giveaway every day. So guys, again, happy Saturday. Thank you for the support. Thank you for connecting and go Dodgers. See you tomorrow.